Let's turn to the NFC South. And that little team in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Carolina Panthers. They Are you guys going to participate in the podcast, or is this? Uh, am I going to do this? This, for this the is whole you hour? in the hot seat, Rick. Uh, uh, Rick let's show. see. Rick is talking too much. Okay. <laughs> well, it's up to you, I suppose, is what we're saying here. But uh, you, you, hey, listen, you're the brains of the operation. Emery's the, the looks. I don't, I don't know what my role is here to facilitate, I suppose. But Carolina Panthers traded up from nine to number one to secure that first overall pick. Uh, it was Bryce Young all the time. It feels like that's what ultimately ended up happening. Is he going to be the best pick in your mind for this for this team? I have no doubt about it. Okay. Going down to the NFC South, and if he wasn't 5'10", he weighed, again, I'll say that for the thousandth time, over 200 pounds, even though Pete Prisco and you are going to argue with me about that. He didn't play at 200. Yeah, but he is a phenomenal player. He checked every box as we went through the pre-draft process. This guy for 5'10", has a phenomenal ability to slide in the pocket, find open windows. He reminded me, I know we made the Steph Curry type comparisons, but some of the throws he makes uh, in his vision reminded me, I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes, but looks a lot like Patrick Mahomes in his body mannerisms out there. So every time this kid had an opportunity to get on the big stage, he answers the question, and I don't have any doubt that he'll answer the question when he starts day one for the Carolina Panthers. Emery is, in your mind, Bryce Young better than Tua Tagovailoa and Mac Jones coming out? It's funny. I think he's better than Mac Jones, but I would say he's a right-handed Tua. They both have that oh. quick release. They have quick <laughs> release, <laughs> great accuracy. The difference between Bryce Young and Tua. Okay, let's go back to the Rick Spillman show. You got your <laughs> opportunity later on the show. I, I okay. love that Young does a great job of um, being able to be dynamic. That's where he separates himself from Tua, so that's why we have him highly graded than Tua. But they throw with that same quick delivery. Their accuracy is where it needs to be. But I also feel like Bryce Young would separate himself from two of that. He doesn't shy away from the big moment. I keep going back yeah. to the Auburn game where they're backed up 98 yards. He drives them down the field to tie the game to push them into overtime, which they subsequently win in the Iron Bowl. So I like him. He plays above the X's and O's and is someone that to me is a plus one in the run game more so than Tua. So you like him better than Tua? I like him better than Tua. Thank you. Stylistically, he's a right-handed Tua. <laughs> you know how you're talking with your grandma, you just agree so you can move on to the next conversation? Yeah, that's, that's true. You just got to agree with Rick. <laughs> yeah, just say yes so we can <laughs> yeah. get through the show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here all night, trust me. All right, Rick, uh, Hidden Gem. Maybe you go with Jonathan Mingo, who uh, got drafted. He in wasn't a hidden gem. We, we were supposed to, if you listen to the assignment, get him, Rick. it says Hidden Gem. So I went with a non-combine offensive okay, lineman. Who'd you go with? Go ahead. You're the you're the host I, of the show. I was We're to, just here as supporting <laughs> actors. I was trying to get there, but you you had some thoughts you needed to share. So we appreciate those thoughts. And uh, <laughs> let's get to it. Is it time for a break yet, Striker? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Jonathan Mingo is a player that I like a lot. Uh, not a hidden gem in Rick's eyes. Uh, he's going to be a good, a fine young player. Who is your hidden gem <laughs> out, of, out of NC State who did not? Savala. Chandler he, Savala, Chandler the offensive Savala. guard out of North Carolina State, and he's a big massive human being he's another one that's very physical point in the run game when he locks on you he's going to try to finish you and torque you to the ground some issues a little bit when he gets out of position and pass protection uh, if he has enough athletic skills to recover but I think this guy is going to come in and for a non combine guy I think he's going to compete for a starting gu uh, guard position for them next year you like T.J. Johnson a lot as well. Yes, who, I did. Who was drafted 80th overall, edge rusher out of Oregon. Fun fact for Chandler Zavala, his dad, two-time winner on Chopped. So mm. he knows his way around the kitchen, I would imagine. It looks like it. It looks like <laughs> it. There you go. I, I throw the alley-oop, you just dunk it. It's, it's that easy, Rick, if you let me do my job. <laughs> All right, let's go down to Atlanta, where Rick spends a lot of his time traveling through that Atlanta airport. <laughs> and the Falcons, You have some, maybe you'll visit this, this guy when you get down there tomorrow. Uh, who's your best pick for the Atlanta Falcons? Uh, I'm going to go Bijan Robinson check. Let's move on to the gem because there's no question that he's a top five talent and they did follow their board. They took a top five talent. We've talked about him to death. I mean, he does everything. It's hard to poke any holes in his game when you're watching it on tape. Atlanta Falcons are going to be very explosive on the offensive side of the ball with everything they've been able to do in the draft the last couple of years. And this one is going to take him over the top. All right. I'm going to ask a, a question that could potentially send Rick over the edge. Emery, who was your running back one? My running back one was Jameer Gibbs, but is. you know what's even another fascinating thing? I thought it was bit? Deuce Vaughn. No, he was three, oh. but he should be number one <laughs> in my eyes. If my comp for B. John Robinson yeah. was right there, Cedric Benson. I felt like he was a more shiftier, explosive Cedric Benson. I just like the fact that he runs consistently and goes downhill, doesn't waste time. Healthier you know, than so Cedric Benson. Very much healthier, and yes. also a better receiver, too. Yes. So, All right, let's go to your— I don't uh, like that comp. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, we, that's taken as red. You don't need to vocalize those thoughts. All right, let's go to your hidden gem. And I think this player, Rick, out of Utah, Clark Phillips III, had he run faster, would have certainly gotten drafted higher. He plays faster than what he timed. Yeah, no, he was another fun player to watch on tape. He has unique ball skills for a small corner. He played outside in the Pac-10 and did a phenomenal job covering those receivers. He's tough. He's gritty. He'll come up and support. Where he fell is because he didn't run fast enough at the combine. When you got a small corner that's quicker than fast, automatically as a general manager and as a scout, you guys are technically scouts. I'll take it. And you're going to put him in as the Nick. And he's going to cover the slot receivers. And the way he plays the game, how smart, how intelligent it is, he's going to be a starter of the Nick for them. Rick, quick question. How much tape has to be good for you to overlook size limitations for it because again Bryce Young and you have Cam Phillips like what the tape has to look there like. there are exceptions to the rule I think these two are exceptions to the rule but you can't have a whole team of exceptions to the rule so each one got one exception <laughs> to the rule that's a nice little segue because now we're going down to Tampa Bay where they took Elijah Kane in the first round his shortcoming is literally short arms. And then they circle back and get Cody Mock, one of our favorite players out of North Dakota State, the offensive tackle who will kick inside, who also has short arms. So that goes against your theory there, Rick. Yeah. Stryker, is there any chance we can put up that graphic that we had up there last night? <laughs> As we're sitting there. Your new host. There it is. He okay. had it ready to go. <laughs> Mock draft. Okay. I have to tell you something. Yeah. Is that I woke up at 3 in the morning in sweats <laughs> and I was drenched because I thought Cody Mock ate you last night. <laughs> and I had actually sat next to him today. He and it, like I couldn't get fan. out of it. You wonder why I was late for breakfast today? Uh, you were in Cody Mock's belly. There you go. <laughs> but you like him? Yeah, no, he's a tough, excellent football player. Uh, left tackle, I think he can play tackle, guard, center. He can play all five positions. He showed up down at the senior bowl. Even though he was a left tackle, they moved him inside the guard. When you see these FBS kids come up and get an opportunity to go against the big boys at the Senior Bowl, he didn't bat an eye. Mm -hmm. And what was amazing about it is that was probably the first time in his career he moved inside to play guard. It was amazing that what he was able to do and how quickly he adjusted to it. And he was one of the top offensive linemen down there. So I refer to and asked you this last night. Tampa Bay took another small school player that lives up in your neck of the woods. Who was that and what ended up happening with him? Ali Marpet, fantastic football player, won a Super Bowl ring, retired um, on his own accord, but after a great career. All right, let's get to your hidden gem. And a couple names to choose from of guys that I liked. Payne Durham is an opportunity for you to, to speak on him. Or even Lijay Duzable, our, our colleague. His guy, Jose Ramirez, got drafted there. I'm not there talking about him. He's round. not a hidden right. gem. <laughs> I was going to do you a favor and pronounce his name, but Stryker, the producer, says, let's see what Rick has. All right, Rick, what do you got? Who is your hidden gem for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Servassier. Dennis. He got it. Oh, my God. Can I God. get a bump or anything? You get a fist bump. Yeah, first time. We're we'll never really the, together. We'll do the, I know, right? Servatier, Servatier, Servatier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us about it. You got the name right. Yeah, he is an undersized linebacker, very instinctive, makes plays from tackle to tackle, excellent range. I think he is good enough athlete in coverage, but when you got draft guys like these, you know they're probably going to be Nick Dime type linebackers, but they're going to be, uh, let me see how I can say that on TV aces on special teams and so you have to remember when you're drafting especially linebackers tight ends uh, safeties the big skill guys they have to come in and contribute on special teams and I think sometimes everybody gets so what are they going to do offense what are they going to do defense but special teams you got to take into account when you draft these guys and I think this guy is going to be one heck of a special team player as well for them. All right let's go down to the home state of Emory Hunt Louisiana and check out what the New Orleans Saints did with their best pick in your eyes, Rick, who are you going with? Uh, I'm going with Brian Brzee. All right. How, how's my pronunciation you going today? You're, fantastic you're a job. First round pick on names, and you came into the league with some questions. <laughs> I didn't know if we were going to get drafted on the names, but you've made some progress. You worked hard. Yeah. Yeah. I went wrong. <laughs> Is it Willison? <laughs> yeah, you sound like uh, Key and Beal. <laughs> All right, Balake, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brzee, if you look at the 21 tape on Brzee, there's no question that he could have probably been a top 10 pick. Understanding, went through the ACL injury, the tragedy of the death of his sister, but he's athletic. He can play the run. I think he'd be a dominant inline pass rusher as he learns and grows into the position. And I think they got a steal here where they ended up picking him. 
Yeah, and you think his best football is certainly ahead of him. And when he was healthy and, and had his mind where on the football field, he was a special talent. But as you know, Rick, he went through some some tough things over the last few years. So hopefully that's behind him and the, the good football is ahead of him. Let's talk about your hidden gem here. I'll give you some options. Nick Saldaveri at ODU, he had a really good senior bowl. He was okay. I loved him. <laughs> Jordan Howden, you told me about him and that you liked him. Let's see if you still like him. When I say I like him, he's an option here. Uh, or maybe even the, the, the guy sandwiched between them. Jake Hayner, the quarterback out of Fresno, who's your guy? Well, I'm going to go with Jake Hayner, and we talked about him at the top of the show, so I don't want to repeat myself, but I think he is Case Keenum. He's going to be yeah. an excellent backup. He can go in and win games for you as he grows into the position. Really like how he plays. Let me ask you quickly before we take a break here. Do you draft him here uh, in the fourth round and – have an eye on him potentially starting down the road or just let's see how it plays out and go from there. I, th I think let's bring him in let's see what happens because a lot of these guys you don't know right you know and I know they went out and sound their assigned Derek Carr so he has an opportunity to learn for a couple of uh, seasons behind him and let's see what happens but I think he has all the natural savvy instincts and smarts to play the position. All right. Thank you Rick. That was uh, exhaustive and exhausting. <laughs>